A jug is gently tipped over, and some water splashes onto tired, dusty feet. As the water carries away the dust, it trickles into a basin placed under the feet. The sound of water. And the noise that you would normally not hear of a towel gently patting and rubbing the feet dry is heard in a room where no one speaks and the silence is awkward and difficult. The man with the water, the basin and the towel move round and once more with tender and gentle movement pours water over another pair of tired feet. A few moments before the upper room was noisy. Jesus and the disciples were arriving to celebrate the feast of the Passover. These men from the country were in the big city, Jerusalem. Last Sunday, their man Jesus had ridden into town with the crowds all cheering. Something big was happening. Jesus had taught and challenged and overturned the tables in the temple during a strange and very difficult week. They felt very aware that something momentous was happening and they were part of it, these men from the country who had served their time with Jesus, were now on the stage in the capital city and they had a part to play. Perhaps we can understand and forgive them if their heads were turned a little, if their pride was puffed up and their egos were swollen. Who can blame these important men, these associates of Jesus, if none of them felt that on this night it was his place to wash the feet of the others? The most junior person would do that, not men of standing, not men who were players on the Jerusalem stage. Who can blame them? Certainly not us, for we understand. We know ourselves there are jobs we do, and there are jobs that we leave to others. No disrespect to them, but, well, it's not really my place to be doing that. We understand when we hear the strident voices, maybe you could do it, I've been here a good bit longer than you have. Well, yes, you have, but with my background and experience, I think it would be better if you do it. What about him, then? He isn't much good for anything complicated. He can wash our feet. Yes, you're right, I agree. Come on, then, there's a good lad. Why me? The voices get louder, the faces get redder, and fingers are pointing. Then the man who tomorrow is going to die takes the towel and the jug of water and the basin. The jug is gently tipped over and some water splashes onto tired, dusty feet. As the water carries away the dust, it trickles into a basin placed under the feet, the sound of water. Then the noise that you would normally not hear of a towel gently patting and rubbing the feet dry is heard in a room where no one speaks, and the silence is awkward and difficult. The man with the water, the basin and the towel move round and once more, with tender and gentle movements, pours water over another pair of tired feet. One more time he shows them, and he shows us, that to really be a somebody, you must be willing to be nobody. One more time he shows them, and he shows us, that to be a king, you must be a servant. Amen.